Hello class. Welcome to Periodonics Week 1, which will cover chapters 1 through 4 in your class text. The periodontium is the structures that support the tooth. The tissues of the periodontium include the gingiva, the periodontal ligament, the cementum, and alveolar bone. If you look at page 4 in your textbook, table 1-1 gives a brief description of each structure and its function. The gingiva provides a tissue seal around the cervical portion or neck of the tooth. It covers the alveolar processes of the jaws and it holds the tissue against the tooth during mastication. The periodontal ligament suspends and maintains the tooth in its socket. The cementum anchors the ends of the periodontal ligament fibers to the tooth so that the tooth stays in its socket. It also protects the dentin of the root. The alveolar bone surrounds and supports the roots of the tooth. The gingiva is the tissue that covers the cervical portions of the teeth and alveolar process of the jaw. It is composed of epithelium and connective tissue. Its function is to provide a covering for the alveolar process of the jaws as well as tissue seal around the cervical portion of the teeth. The free gingiva is the unattached portion of the gingiva also known as the marginal gingiva. The sulcus is the space between the free gingiva and the tooth surface. Attached gingiva tightly connects to the cementum and to the periosteum of the alveolar bone. Interdental papilla fill the space between the two adjacent teeth. The gingival margin is the upper edge of the gingiva. The free gingival groove separates the free and the attached gingiva from each other. The mucogingival junction is the boundary of the attached gingiva and the alveolar mucosa. Gingiva is distinguished from the oral mucosa at the mucogingival junction. Attached gingiva is usually 1 millimeter to 9 millimeters wide. The gingival margin is usually half a millimeter to 2 millimeters coronal to the cemento enamel junction. The papilla is gingiva that fills the embrasure spaces. The call is non keratinized, it is buccal and lingual interdental papillae. The periodontal ligament provides a suspensory cushion in the 0.4 to 1.5 millimeter space between the surface of the tooth and the bone. A connective tissue complex primarily filled with fiber bundles and cells. These cells form the pericementum for the cemental surface of the root and periosteum for the bone. The functions of the periodontal ligament are supportive, sensory, nutritive, formative, and resorptive. The root cementum is hard, mineralized tissue that covers the roots of the teeth. It is light yellow in color and attaches to the dentin. It is bone-like but is more resistant to resorption than bone. It has no blood supply or nerves, so it is insensitive to pain. It functions as the anchor of the ends of the PDL fibers to the tooth. It protects the dentin and forms cementum to compensate for tooth wear, thereby maintaining the proper occlusal plane. The alveolar bone is the bony projection that surrounds and supports the teeth. 
Its function is to form the bony sockets of the teeth and to provide protection and support. It is composed of cortical bone, cancellous bone, the alveolus, alveolar bone proper, and the periosteum. Cortical bone forms the outside walls of the mandible and the facial and lingual aspects of the maxilla. It is thicker in the molar region than in the incisor region. Two defects that can occur are fenestration and dehiscence. Cancellous bone provides the lattice-like bone found on the interior portion of the alveolar process. The alveolus is the bony socket. The alveolar bone proper is the line layer of bone that lines the bony socket. In radiographs, it is the lamina dura. The periosteum is the layer of connective tissue that covers the outer surface of bone. The alveolar crest is the most coronal portion of the alveolar process. It is 1 to 2 millimeters apical to the CEJ of the teeth in health. Interproximal bone is the area of bone that lies between two adjacent teeth. Interradicular bone is the bone that is found between the roots of multi-rooted teeth. The crestal contour of interdental bone is either horizontal or vertical. Chapter 1, Section 2, Nerve Supply, Blood Supply, and Lymphatic System. The nerve supply to the periodontium is supplied by the trigeminal nerve. Its function is to provide nerve receptors in the periodontal ligament, gingiva, and alveolar bone that register pain, pressure, and touch. It also provides information to the PDL regarding movement and jaw position, known as proprioception. The superior alveolar, the infraorbital, the greater palatine, and nasopalatine nerves innervate the maxillary gingiva. The mandibular gingiva is innervated by the buccal, mental, and sublingual branches of the lingual nerves. The maxillary teeth are innervated by superior alveolar nerves and mandibular teeth and PDL are innervated by the inferior alveolar nerve. See page 14, figure 1.20 to see the nerve supply diagram. A network of blood vessels provides the blood supply to both the hard and soft tissues of the maxilla and the mandible. Its function is to transport oxygen and nutrients to the tissue cells of the periodontium. It also removes carbon dioxide and other waste products. The vascular supply to the maxillary periodontium comes from the greater palatine artery, infraorbital artery, and the anterior and posterior superior alveolar arteries. The blood supply for the mandible comes from the inferior alveolar artery and branches of the inferior alveolar artery. The vascular supply to the teeth and periodontal tissues in the maxilla come from the superior and inferior arteries and other branch arteries. The picture on the right is a diagram of an arteriole penetrating the interdental alveolar bone to supply the interdental tissues. The portion of the picture on the right shows the supraperiosteal arteriole overlying the facial alveolar bone sending branches to surrounding tissues. The lymphatic system helps the body fight infections, foreign proteins, or cancers. Its function is to filter and remove abnormal cells or invading organisms. It is composed of lymph nodes, lymph ducts, and fine capillaries. 
This concludes the first lecture for Week 1 Periodontics class.